from $900 to $20,000, Bitcoin's historic 2017 price run revisited. The chart above says it all. One year ago as of the time of writing, the price of Bitcoin traded between $930 and $978, movements that perhaps set the stage for the cryptocurrency's value to cross the $1,000 on New Year's Day. Indeed, that headline-making development would be the first of many to come for 2017. In this article, we look at some of the major moments for Bitcoin's price during the last 12 months, a period of time that saw the price of Bitcoin climb from below $1,000 to nearly $20,000 on the Coindesk Bitcoin Price Index. It was a year that arguably exceeded last year's bullish predictions and one that saw unprecedented interest coming from places, particularly in the finance industry that some may not have imagined possible just 12 months ago. The buck impact while January started off with Bitcoin price fireworks, that month would also see one of the defining regulatory moments of 2017, an initial move by the People's Bank of China, the country's central bank, to tighten its oversight of the country's then dominant Bitcoin exchanges. Yet, the warnings from Chinese officials didn't cause the market death blow that some observers feared. However, it did lead to a drop in trading volume as a result of the imposition of new trading fees by what were then the big three exchanges, Huobi, Ocoin and BTCC. Those exchanges later halted withdrawals following new edicts from the block, ultimately closing fiat trading this fall following further restrictions from Chinese regulators. The no heard round the world. Investors Cameron and Tyler Winklevoss first filed to launch a Bitcoin exchange traded fund back in 2013, setting the stage for a multi-year journey that led to the March 2017 rejection by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission SEC. And while the SEC has since moved to review that decision, a process that is still pending, markets at the time reacted poorly, perhaps because some were betting that the U.S. regulator would approve rather than shoot down the proposed ETF. On the news. The market dropped by nearly 30% that day, ultimately recovering above the $1,000 level after the initial drop. But in what was perhaps a harbinger of the months to come, Bitcoin's price was back above its pre ETF point within days of the ruling. And despite the reluctance expressed by the SEC at the time, a number of firms have filed to create Bitcoin ETFs, with a particular focus on funds tied to cryptocurrency futures. The Summer of Bulls if there was one phrase to define the period between May and September of this year, it was this, a new all-time high for Bitcoin. The cryptocurrency's price pushed past each successive milestone with apparent ease, including one on May 1st that saw Bitcoin break past the record set on an infamous and now defunct exchange. This summer also saw significant activity around initial coin offerings, as shown by data in Coindesk's Eco Tracker, leading one observer to dub it the summer of crypto love. As May drew to a close, the price of Bitcoin climbed above $2,000 for the first time and surpassed $3,000 just weeks later. At the same time, those price milestones were often accompanied by subsequent turbulence, including a drop of $300 within one hour just a day after the $3,000 line was first crossed. Perhaps one of the most noteworthy developments was the entry of major Wall Street analysts to the Bitcoin price watching game. Goldman Sachs' Shibal Jafari notably predicted the move past $4,000, leading to further forecasts from both Goldman Sachs and other analysts as the weeks and months progressed. By the first week of September, the price of Bitcoin exceeded $5,000 for the first time, only to drop by hundreds of dollars two days later. Indeed, the coming days would see a reversal of the late summer's gains, with the cryptocurrency's price falling below $3,400 on September 14th and down past $3,000 the following day. Past $10,000 and beyond. By mid-October, the September malaise had been forgotten and the price of Bitcoin was once again above $5,000. Despite the pending closure of China's Big Three exchanges and a global crackdown on unregulated ecos beginning to take shape, the price of Bitcoin was largely buoyed by a bullish sentiment which would set the stage for some of the eye-popping moves in store for November and December. Yet for all the regulatory rumblings and forks away from the Bitcoin network, the cryptocurrency's price largely continued its upward trajectory, culminating with the Coindesk Bitcoin price index's all-time high of $19,783.21 on December 17th. 
but in a refrain of the move seen after many of the all-time highs this year, that close encounter with $20,000 was followed just days later by a 30% drop that shaved billions of dollars off of the total cryptocurrency market capitalization. It was one of the biggest market corrections seen to date, sending Bitcoin's price tumbling below $11,000. Over the coming days, the price of Bitcoin would recover, climbing back beyond $16,000 and higher on other cryptocurrency exchanges worldwide. Yet as shown in the most recent graphs and price data, Bitcoin's value has begun falling, dropping to the mid-minus $13 case on December 28th after opening the day above $15,000. Indeed, the moves of the past few months raise the same old question, where does Bitcoin's price go from here? If 2017 is any indication, all bets are truly off. What bankers said about Bitcoin in 2018? Is Bitcoin in a bubble? Or will its price continue to increase through 2018? Notable bankers, economists and investors have all waited over the past year. But views vary, some believe investors should hold their funds. But many have also sounded the alarm on Bitcoin while expressing doubts on other cryptocurrencies. The Bears Peter Schiff One of the few who predicted the 2008 housing crisis, Peter Schiff, President and CEO of Euro-Pacific Capital, may be a gold bull, but his love of hard money doesn't extend to Bitcoin. And while some people can benefit from Bitcoin, the investment advisor does not expect most people to sell in time to do so. He told Coindesk on August 17th, when Bitcoin was trading at $4,000, there's certainly a lot of bullishness about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, and that's the case with bubbles in general. The psychology of bubbles fuels it. You just become more convinced that it's going to work. And the higher the price goes, the more convinced you become that you're right. But it's not going up because it's going to work. It's going up because of speculation. Jamie Dimon On September 12th, Jamie Dimon, CEO of JP Morgan Chase was speaking at a Barclays event when he doubled down on his criticism of Bitcoin. At the time, Bitcoin was worth still around $4,000. Since then, he's taken aim at Bitcoin in a few more occasions, which sparked a wave of comments from Wall Street figures. And the CEO said he's now done talking about Bitcoin. It's a fraud. It's worse than tulip bulbs. It won't end well. Someone is going to get killed. Dimon on September 12th, right now these crypto things are kind of a novelty. People think they're kind of neat. But the bigger they get, the more governments are going to close them down. Dimon on Sept. 22. If you're stupid enough to buy it, you'll pay the price for it one day. Dimon on Oct. 13. Ray Dalio. Ray Dalio, founder of the hedge fund firm Bridgewater Associates said in an interview on September 19th that the speculation around Bitcoin coupled with its lack of broad adoption are preventing it from becoming a true currency. Bitcoin stayed at around $4,000 at the time. It's not an effective storehold of wealth, because it has volatility to it, unlike gold. Bitcoin is a highly speculative market. Bitcoin is a bubble. John Hathaway Two days later on September 21st, John Hathaway, a gold investor with Tocqueville Asset Management referred to cryptocurrencies as garbage during an interview, saying they were not taking attention or investments away from gold. Sure you can make money in bubbles any time but you have to get out. Let's not forget that the total market value of these cryptocurrencies is $180 billion or so, maybe a little less now, that's tiny compared to gold. Jordan Belfort Jordan Belfort, the Wolf of Wall Street, backed up Jamie Dimonin on September 27th after the latter's infamous fraud comments. Bitcoin hovered around the $3,910 mark throughout the day. I'm not saying you should or shouldn't buy Bitcoin, but what I'm saying is I personally, myself, would be very, very careful about investing a lot of money in something that can vanish very quickly. Warren Buffett Warren Buffett, the billionaire investor and perhaps the most notable figure of all listed here, called Bitcoin a real bubble on October 26th during a question and answer session he hosts every year. At the time, Bitcoin stayed close to the $5,700 mark. People get excited from big price movements, and Wall Street accommodates.
you can't value Bitcoin because it's not a value producing asset. Tijin Thayum. The following week on November 2nd, CEO of Credit Suisse Tijin Thayum weighed in on the topic at a press conference where he noted that Bitcoin's ability to facilitate anonymous transactions made it a challenge. At the time, the cryptocurrency was floating around the $7,000 mark. From what we can identify, the only reason today to buy or sell Bitcoin is to make money, which is the very definition of speculation and the very definition of a bubble. Carl Icahn Another billionaire investor Carl Icahn, also the founder of Icahn Enterprises said in an interview on December 1st that Bitcoin looked like a bubble to him, comparing it to the Mississippi land bubble just prior to its collapse. Bitcoin jumped to $10,000 at the time. I got to tell you honestly, I don't understand it. I just don't get it. I just stay out of something if I don't understand it. The Bulls. Bill Miller. Yet the legendary hedge fund investor Bill Miller stood by a different view. He doubled down on his belief in cryptocurrencies as his MVP1 fund had increased its weight on Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash to nearly 50%. In mid-December, he said in a podcast that his fund bought in around 2013 and 2014 when the Bitcoin price was at $350 in average. At that time, the Bitcoin investment only accounted for 5% of the pool. Miller also took aim at those who have criticized the cryptocurrency, including Warren Buffett and Jamie Dimon above. According to Miller, neither of them had fully thought the topic through. I'm highly confident to say that not one of them had actually studied it carefully, he said during the podcast. That is to say, they have strong opinions about something they haven't really looked at. Mike Novogratz, a former principal at Fortress Investment Group, long a fund with an interest in Bitcoin, Mike Novogratz takes a more opportunistic approach. While agreeing that Bitcoin may have entered bubble territory in 2017, the billionaire investor announced on September 26th he would launch a $500 million hedge fund focusing on cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology. Bitcoin climbed back to $3,000 s that day after the tumble amidst China's crackdown on eco. This is going to be the largest bubble of our lifetimes. Prices are going to get way ahead of where they should be. You can make a whole lot of money on the way up, and we plan on it. He has since called plans up for the fund but remains bullish on the technology. The Academics While experts from the academic world didn't go as far as the financiers who largely have cast doubts on the legitimacy of cryptocurrencies, they nonetheless raised questions on the bubble as well as whether cryptocurrencies can truly be evaluated in a rational model. Aswath Damodaran Known as the Wall Street's Dean of Valuation, Aswath Damodaran a finance professor at New York University's Stern School of Business wrote on October 25th in a blog post that that he does not think cryptocurrencies would ever be an asset class. Nor could it be a commodity. Bitcoin is not an asset, but a currency, and as such, you cannot value it or invest in it. You can only price it and trade it. Nouriel Roubini Nouriel Roubini, economics professor at New York University's Stern School of Business, referred to Bitcoin as a gigantic speculative bubble on November 8th during an interview with Business Insider Poland. Bitcoin reached nearly $8,000 at the time. What's more, it is also used by criminals for their shady business. I think that more and more countries will start to make cryptocurrency exchanges illegal like China did. New regulations will be adopted. So, this will find its end. Joseph Stiglitz. Joseph Stiglitz former chief economist at the World Bank and now a professor at the Columbia University said on November 29th he believes digital currencies should be controlled by the government, calling Bitcoin's price increases unsustainable. At the time, Bitcoin was jumping around the $9,900 mark. Bitcoin is successful only because of its potential for circumvention, lack of oversight. So it seems to me it ought to be outlawed. It doesn't serve any socially useful function. Robert Schiller Robert Schiller, Nobel Prize winning economist somehow echoed with a similar view on December 19th. He said in an interview that investors in the cryptocurrency are not making rational decisions when it comes to Bitcoin investment since there's not way to evaluate the cryptocurrency. Bitcoin's price skyrocketed to almost $20,000 over the prior weekend.
The cryptocurrency's price pushed past each successive milestone with apparent ease, including one on May 1st that saw Bitcoin break past the record set on an infamous and now defunct exchange. This summer also saw significant activity around initial coin offerings, as shown by data in Coindesk's eco-tracker, leading one observer to dub it the summer of crypto love. As May drew to a close, the price of Bitcoin climbed above $2,000 for the first time and surpassed $3,000 just weeks later. At the same time, those price milestones were often accompanied by subsequent turbulence, including a drop of $300 within one hour just a day after the $3,000 line was first crossed. Perhaps one of the most noteworthy developments was the entry of major Wall Street analysts to the Bitcoin price watching game. Goldman Sachs's Shibal Jafari notably predicted the move past $4,000, leading to further forecasts from both Goldman Sachs and other analysts some may not have imagined possible just 12 months ago. The buck impact while January started off with Bitcoin price fireworks, that month would also see one of the defining regulatory moments of 2017, an initial move by the People's Bank of China, the country's central bank, to tighten its oversight of the country's then dominant Bitcoin exchanges. Yet, the warnings from Chinese officials didn't cause the market death blow that some observers feared. However, it did lead to a drop in trading volume as a result of the imposition of new trading fees by what were then the big three exchanges, Huobi, Ocoin and BTCC. Those exchanges later halted withdrawals following new edicts from the block, ultimately closing fiat trading this fall following further restrictions from Chinese regulators. The no heard round the world. Investors Cameron and Tyler Winklevoss first filed to launch a Bitcoin exchange-traded fund back in 2013, setting the stage for a multi-year journey that led to the March 2017 rejection by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission SEC. And while the SEC has since moved to review that decision, a process that is still pending, markets at the time reacted poorly, perhaps because some were betting that the U.S. regulator would approve rather than shoot down the proposed ETF. On the news. The market dropped by nearly 30% that day, ultimately recovering above the $1,000 level after the initial drop. But in what was perhaps a harbinger of the months to come, Bitcoin's price was back above its pre ETF point within days of the ruling. And despite the reluctance expressed by the SEC at the time, a number of firms have filed to create Bitcoin ETFs, with a particular focus on funds tied to cryptocurrency futures. The Summer of Bulls if there was one phrase to define the period between May and September of this year, it was this, a new all-time high for Bitcoin. From $900 to $20,000, Bitcoin's historic 2017 price run revisited. The chart above says it all. One year ago as of the time of writing, the price of Bitcoin traded between $930 and $978, Movements that perhaps set the stage for the cryptocurrency's value to cross the $1,000 on New Year's Day. Indeed, that headline-making development would be the first of many to come for 2017. In this article, we look at some of the major moments for Bitcoin's price during the last 12 months, a period of time that saw the price of Bitcoin climb from below $1,000 to nearly $20,000 on the Coindesk Bitcoin Price Index. It was a year that arguably exceeded last year's bullish predictions and one that saw unprecedented interest coming from places, particularly in the finance industry, that says the weeks and months progressed. By the first week of September, the price of Bitcoin exceeded $5,000 for the first time, only to drop by hundreds of dollars two days later. Indeed, the coming days would see a reversal of the late summer's gains with the cryptocurrency's price falling below $3,400 on September 14th and down past $3,000 the following day, past $10,000 and beyond. By mid-October, the September malaise had been forgotten and the price of Bitcoin was once again above $5,000. Despite the pending closure of China's Big Three exchanges and a global crackdown on unregulated ecos beginning to take shape, the price of Bitcoin was largely buoyed by a bullish sentiment which would set the stage for some of the eye-popping moves in store for November and December. Yet for all the regulatory rumblings and forks away from the Bitcoin network, the cryptocurrency's price largely